In this video, I want to talk about some top tips to help you make the most out of your Sony XPS G1. So first up, I want to talk about this interesting feature where you can have up to 16 different menus open at any one time, as long as you have network connectivity. As an operator, this can really help speed up your workflow. So if I just minimize my menu here, what I can do is open up another tab and open up the menu again, but in another window. And now you can see I can work across two windows at the same time. Another way this can be useful is you can delegate out different tasks to different crew members. So for example, you could have an engineer now work without having to disturb the operator when they're on air. If you have Wi-Fi connectivity, you can also access the menu on different external devices like a phone or the tablet I've got here. And this can be useful for example, secondary operators who might be needing to do things like changing the content on InVision screens. Um, so I'll just show you here, I've got frame memory seven to line and you can see I can change what's in my frame memory seven just as fast as I could on the main menu. When working with multiple menus, it's important to know which one the panel's linked to. So you can tell that really easily by seeing which chain is highlighted. So you can see this one here has the chain highlighted, so that's the one connected. If I double punch key one, you can see that's linked. To change this to this menu, you simply click on the chain and say OK, and now this one is the one that's linked. So you can see if I double punch the wipe, that comes up there. And that's how you link a menu. Another great way to speed up workflow is to create menu shortcuts to the pages that you use most. So you can do that in two ways. I'll show you a way through the menu. So a useful page for me would be key priorities. So if I go down here to the key priority page, and then you see I've got this favorites menu bar down here. So all I do to select that page is click this heart down here, and then it comes up down here in my favorites menu bar. And if I don't want it displayed in there anymore, then I just go back to the page and then I unselect that heart. Now to create a menu shortcut from the panel, we can do that in the utility module over here. And you can see that I've got three already set up. So I have one to my clip store page. I have one to my multi view layout page. And then I've also built a shortcut to take me to the utility function assign, which is where you create these menu shortcuts. So that is setup, panel, module, utility function assign. And to create one, which I'm going to do to the switcher outputs, um, all you need to do is click menu shortcut. You will see that it's highlighted. The panel starts flashing. And then I go to the page that I want to remember, which is outputs. And then I click an empty space here. It takes me back to this page and I just simply unclick menu shortcut. And now you see it's created one saying two to five. So if I just find that in this list down here, and then I can name that something useful, like switch output. And then you see it comes up here. And now if I go between these, um, you see I've got clip stores, multi view page, utility function assign page, switch outputs. And that's how you create menu shortcuts on the panel and also in the menu. A useful feature of navigating the menu is the back button. So you can click the back button and the forward button up here just once and it will take you to previous pages or you can hold it down and then you will get your whole history like so and you can find past pages you are on. There's a simple way to control AUX buses on the G1. So my left hand monitor here, I've changed this from program to my AUX bus one. And I can route AUXs through the menu just by going to other effects, AUX bus. And then you will see I've got my AUXs here. I've got AUX one up here on FM 10 and I can change the sources like so. You can also change the routing of your auxes on the panel. So here I have my delegation bus. I can select aux one and then change how that's routed. 
And another useful feature is AUX mix. So sometimes on productions you run out of resources, but you still need to be able to mix content. So for example, if you're um, routing content to a screen and you still need to mix it, that's where AUX mix comes in handy. So to turn on AUX mix, you can do that from the panel with this AUX mix button here. And now I can mix between different sources like so, or you can do it on the menu. So back in AUX bus, AUX cross point, and I go to AUX one and then edit. And you can see I can turn that AUX mix on and off. And I can also set the transition rate for that as well. So I can make that something shorter, for example. And then when I mix between things, it's a little bit shorter. So that's a really useful feature on the G1. When I sat in front of the G1 for the first time, I needed to know how to switch the ME from single mode to dual mode. So in single mode, you have one ME and you've got eight keys across that. In dual mode, you've got two MEs and then you divide those eight keys across that. So let me show you how to set that up. You come to Setup, System, Format Config, ME Split. And then you see here in this top one, I've got this in single mode and that's my program. In the second one, I've got this at the moment in single mode, but if I toggle this, it'll split it across ME1 and ME2, and then you would hit apply. To assign those keys across those two MEs, I go to setup, switcher, config, ME assign, and then you see here, this is the number of assigned keys for each ME, and these are set in pairs, so I could have something like four and four, or in this case, I have two and six. This is a 2ME panel and you can see that this strip is set to ME1, but how do we access our ME2? So to change the delegation of this, you need to go into the menu, go into Setup, Panel, Config, and then you can see you can change the assignment here from ME1 to ME2, and that's changed the delegation. You can also automate this process by setting up a macro for it, um, like I've done here, so I can switch between ME1 and ME2. I'm now going to show you how to load and save your show. So when you're working on that production, you can pick up right where you left off. So if I go to the menu and I go to File, All, and the Load and Save screen, then you can see this is where you load in shows. So you select your package, for example, demo video, and you can see all the different categories that are included in that package. And you can also see any notes that have been made about it. Then you can load that in. Down here in the Setup and Register, um, categories. You can also select what you want to load from that package. So for example, if you don't need everything and you just want the macros, then you can simply just load in the macros. Another useful thing here is the clear register before load button so that you can have that selected and it will clear any register data on your switcher so you don't have any um, snapshots or anything like that left over just getting muddled with your new package. And you have your save submenu here, and this is where you can either create a new package and save that, or you can update an existing one. And the last thing I'm going to show you is how to export your package. So you simply go to File, Package, and then choose your package, and then hit Export Now. And that will create your show file on your computer or a USB drive. One of the things I love about this switcher is if I'm working on it the next day, then I can set it to start up exactly how I left it. To do that, I go to Setup, System, Startup, and then you see here in Switcher, I can choose Resume or Custom. So to resume, it will resume exactly how I left it. And if I choose that as well for frame memories and clip players, then it will load the frame memory and clip player clips straight in at just how I left it. If I set custom, I can also define user preferences and have it set up just how I like it. And I can define that down here in a setup and initial status define. My last tip in this video is if you're ever stuck with what a specific function does, then help is not far away. You simply click the three dots up here, go to the user guide, and that will bring up this fully searchable user guide here. So, if I search by a keyword like frame, 
it will give me all the details about frame memories and then I can click on the page number as well and it will take me straight there. You should be able to find answers to all your questions in there. I hope these tips have been useful for you and have given you some insight into what the XPSG1 can do.